Okay. If you're ready, let's let's give it a go. Sure. sure, anytime. Welcome back to another episode of Review. It's a bit late this time because I was on vacation. Nevertheless, Martin and me still decided to talk about some of the most yeah, exciting cards from the Brothers War. Let's jump right into it with the first one, which is Miril Shield of Argive. Argive. Yeah, so we have a Grand Abolisher effect on a 4-drop. We don't have any ETB, but yeah, it's some something like a, a better version. It's a mix between Grand Abolisher and a better version of Primas, I would say. Yeah, maybe, probably. Primath also making tokens when blocking. Ah, Might true. Be relevant. But yeah, this but yeah. this has kind of the Najela effect where yeah. it yeah. gets out of hand very quickly. Yeah, exactly. So Four I, mana is tough though. That's true. I think it's it does not serve as a a swap commander for any matchup. But yeah. it might be played every now and then in aggressive decks. Maybe Boros, I don't know, White Weenie. Something like this. Or we also talked about this prior to the podcast. At some point you might be able to incorporate it in in a combo pot deck in order to have a four drop uh, that denies interaction of your opponents. That might be interesting. If this would have been a five drop, you could have gotten it when sacrificing Academy Rector. Yes. But right. it's only a four drop, so you can yeah. do that. Yeah. Okay. Next up, there's the new little Pyromancer, but this time it's a better one. Yeah. He removed his appreciation for instant and sorceries <laughs> for love for non creature spells. True. And also the elements suddenly became a little bit more robotic, getting the artifact creature type instead of just being creatures. At this uh, moment, we have to give a shout out to the pauper community. Maybe in the future we will run a few games with this guy as a commander. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, we thought about which decks are making use of this card primarily and... I think in especially in Brazil there is still uh, Ludovic Jeska around. We have Balmor, which can also make use of it, and uh, an interesting one would also be Galazef, because it could tap the soldiers for mana. I think that might be one of the the stronger ones. I think all the, of course most of the Pyromancer decks are already Izzet, so this just goes into them. Yeah, true. But yeah, also having the the artifact route. We don't really have like affinity for artifact cards really played a lot in our format. That's so true. that kind of makes this card a little bit worse for like the general artifact uh, archetype. But yeah, still very interesting cards. Card. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean this one gets gets you a bit closer to casting or you can always cast a galvanic blast but you know you don't always do four damage with it uh, but there are i think yeah that's why i said like in, in pauper if you have this guy as a commander you have much more interesting synergies around it and for a dual commander it's kind of we are waiting for maybe at some point we have a an is it affinity command zone that can also make use of something like this Okay, next up we have Bushwake. And what I personally find very interesting about this card is that Wizards has started to print B-modal fight spells, so to say. So back in the days you had most often a fight spell just being a fight spell, and now we have, for the f I think it's for the first time, right? A second mode on this card. I think in Monogreen, you, Mono you're probably right, at least for one mana. Yeah, I'm just uh, thinking about Monogreen, yes. Yeah. 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 Like fight, fight spells haven't been a staple. We've seen Ram through in Hogak. Yep. And obviously, if you are playing Monogreen Aggro, you kind of have to include them just to pack some removal to get rid of some annoying blockers. So this might be a place for this card. Yeah, exactly. I think there is like 
just have an how's it called prey up on i think i have in mind it's exactly yeah. the same card just without the basic land search line so that's yeah. definitely better definitely an upgrade and I, and i like the fact that they are upgrading fight spells for mono green aggressive decks then we have a new removal spell martin lay down it's your in white yes it's in white obviously because we are in 2022 <laughs> this is the year of white removal not sure when Prismatic ending was printed. I think that might have been twenty twenty one. Yeah. Time flies by when you look at cards all day because they spoil a billion of them every day. Mm. Uh, but this one piqued our interest because it exiles creatures, which is always good, and it does something early in the game. You can bold a bird with this, and you can also use it later in the game when you have uh, more planes available i think in even in three color decks you can get to like three or four planes rather easily with the triomes and maybe fetching a few more planes than usually because like the mana bases are so good you're usually not struggling with this so you can play towards this card if you have it in hand yeah there's definitely no more reason to run how's it called one that puts on the Oust? second Oust, yes yes uh, let's see or maybe yeah. in addition. Okay, if you're in need of another uh, one, maybe you can still run it in addition. But it's not looking good for Oust, at least. Yeah, definitely. Someday. Which is a good thing, I think. Yes. Oust has always been like very clunky and punishing against annoying decks. So I really like this card. Right. Very, very interesting. Okay, and then we have a potential commander. Can also be played in 99, of course. Uh, Jix. The new black Edric, it's definitely not as good as Edric. I mean, it, com it, it comes with a slightly better body, but whenever you draw, you have to pay one life. And the fact that it's mono black makes it still interesting for command zones, but uh, there's there's missing blue somewhere. And Yeah. Black is maybe the, the second best color for pitch spells, maybe with red. I think you can play yeah. quite a few of them. Contamination, grief, unmask, Co stuff like contagion, that. Contagion, you mean, right? Contagion, contagion. It, yeah. yeah, contamination yeah. is the the like enchantment that yes. prevents you from playing. Exactly. Like yeah, and also uh, you have a lot of uh, recurring creatures in mono black. So while you may be lacking in the evasion part, so you probably will have to deal with opponent blockers. Having facing control decks. That just try to remove your all your one ones that try to draw your cards is maybe not the best plan if cards like Blood Gas or Grave Crawler come back every turn. Yeah, yeah. When I saw this card the first time, I I was asking how many Kite Sail Freebooters Wizards is going to print, <laughs> and at some point, if there is yeah a decent amount, maybe we we get back to Brewing Jigs, and this might. It's it's still a different fashion than than Edric, that's for sure. But the idea of having it's more like Tumna magic. Let's let's maybe we can agree on that. Mm, it's closer to that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, definitely interesting. I like the activated ability, although it's a bit expensive, both in terms of mana as well as discarding cards. But yeah, sometimes thing can be really good, can also be quite awkward. Depends. It's a gamble. And then there is the Goblin Blast Runner. Not only that this is a new friend for our Goblin Gang, and it's perhaps included in the Grand Soul Pile, I don't know if it's good enough. At first glance I'd say it isn't, but maybe it is. But it's definitely good enough to be played in Yuri, since you're going to sacrifice a lot of permanence over there, so... This one is most often a 3-2 with Menace for one mana, and that seems to be good. Yeah, sadly, this doesn't scale infinitely, so the trigger can only happen once a turn. It's not a trigger, it's just a static ability. Yeah. If this would be a triggered ability, it'd be kind of fun. Then it would definitely uh... be, be played in Grenso, because then you yeah. could incorporate it into the, the combo pile, because you're yeah. always sacrificing goblins into the Skirk perspective. And then this would also be played in a lot of other decks because just yeah. cracking two fetches and swinging for five sounds. Exactly. Kinda busted. True. And then again, 
for the control X primarily we have another removal spell which is for our format slightly better than maelstrom pulls legions to ashes how happy are you to have this card from one to ten maybe like a, a six okay fair enough um, i'm interested i um, will probably try this out i yeah. think the, the cmc3 removal slot has been getting thinner due to cards like prosthetic ending just being better at the lower cmc yeah and being more flexible and also rather competitive so this might not make the cut even though it's a good card maybe if you play two color control but also okay but i think for three color you would probably need a decent amount of desperation for removal to include maelstrom pulse or this card i think hmm. both cards haven't seen a lot of play in recent months yeah but that's, that's i good. think did, did, did the leovold list that that won the won the tournament no play no maelstrom no no, pulse? no, 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 no yeah. i did not i do i was just about to say that's more due to the fact that uh, it's harder to in, include like in a in a deck that fits the game plan that wants to run this card but also because of the colors green green and black i think gidrock does run it i'm not even sure about that probably not there is assassin's trophy in a prop dk i don't know about yeah the i think i think list. is not is not is not, not up to in date. there anymore yeah, yeah. That, that could be the case talking about black cards or still onto black cards there is a big cycle with all these prototype creatures the artifact creatures you can cast them for a different mana cost and then they have different power but same stats uh, we've picked the phyrexian flash gorger i think this is quite a powerful one there are others there's the blue one which is interesting too depending on which deck you're playing obviously they they might fit your strategy too but this one has manners and lifelink and ward i think as long as you don't have to pay mana for ward it's fine it's still annoying but it's fine tempo wise that's much better than paying mana and these cards are especially great in in late game since you can cast them for the higher mana costs and then you have a big beater your opponent has to take care of and in this case he has to pay seven life in order to deal with it if it's a targeted removal so that's quite scary i think yeah it's a pretty strong card from from face value yeah. just a three mana three three with menace and lifelink is already and the and the water ability is already pretty decent i think it's probably will be we don't really have a deck for this might be an issue maybe jigs yeah maybe, maybe, jigs. maybe the black aggressive ones yeah also you can't ramp this up with a dog consistently because it's double black i think that might be an issue yeah. for for some decks that's that's definitely true if there would be like a golgari or jund mid-range deck i think this could see play mm -hmm. at, at some point we will get there for sure i think maybe maybe if partners were still a thing and you had like a jund partner <laughs> deck that played more lands due to being able to sink the mana into uh the partner command zone this might be a little bit better because you are realistically getting up to seven lands yeah but yeah we will, we will see apart from that there is the sigenul stalwart which is not a very interesting card at first i'm running emara from time to time this is the first dog that lets you tap down winter up with it which is quite powerful and in the same turn uh, we thought about the wizards was printing maria in dominaria united the gruel colored Urza, yes and uh, recently there has been also a gruel transformer i guess that also does stuff with artifacts so at some point i can see wizards either printing a decent cruel artifact command zone or we have enough cards to kind of do something around that and maybe this card will also come in handy there we, we will see i think it's it's uh definitely an upgrade for amara and apart from that at some point it might be interesting the moons yeah, if they, yeah. they wouldn't have printed the, the turtle 
you might be thinking that uh, green is the new artifact uh, color. Which but, turtle? Uh, the the improvised one that gets hex ah, you mean yeah, yeah 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 uh, that card is bonkers. So That's that insane. kind of went went back to the good old okay blue has artifacts as well. <laughs> That's true. But uh, yeah, this is a cool one. I think so too. And for the white winnie guys, and maybe even for two color aggressive decks, there's also a new toy or at least something to play with the recruitment officer back in the days they were i think it was printed in magic 2010 core set there was the elite vanguard which was one white two one vanilla already fine classic savannah lion right and this one has a mana sink for the late game on it which is not too bad you can definitely try that out that's definitely also a very good uh, mana sink for a white winnie style deck because most creatures you would play in a deck, besides maybe Myril <laughs> and Solitude, play deck, right? and Solitude, obviously, uh, are CBC three or less. Yeah. So uh, you will probably hit most of the time, which is good for a card like this. True. So the next one is Feldum Ronum Excavator. Oh, oh a new Karizef. Or a new Karizef? Yeah, we will see. I think it's already played. Again in Brazil, these players are convinced that this is this is a better Karizev, might be the case. I mean, the second, uh, the triggered ability is quite interesting. It basically gives your commander evasion. What's good is that it's any kind of damage, so if, you, if it's shocked or bolted, you can still exile cards and probably play them. But I'm not so sure if it's the best substitute for for Kari Zef. there's the new goblin one of our friends is also experimenting with and other players might do so already too ardos it's called the one that gives creatures entering the battlefield plus two plus oh so it's definitely a much more creature oriented version you would play with this commander but it's also a potential candidate for the red deck wins command zone so we will see. Uh, yeah, I think we've seen a billion red commanders that were told to be the next new agro command zone. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And five years later, we are still playing Karizev. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. If Besides it, Ragavan, obviously. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, if, if it wasn't for the monkey ban, there isn't that much... In the end, it mostly usually comes down to the evasion of curry with the menace and, and the monkey coming into play. Yeah, and also the synergies really around the monkey, right? Uh, hard fire yeah. and all that, sacrificing yeah. tokens to gain or play cards with better efficiency, so to say. Yeah. But let's see, at least I think I've seen it in many Yoshi lists already since it's a legendary creature. Uh, you can fit it in it curves nicely attacking for four on turn two with a small upside yeah i'm i'm interested maybe maybe it's it's able to to be the new curry we will see last but not least we have awake in the woods and while this card might not see that much play in dual commander primarily in in lands Decks. I think the the closest to to play is either Golos Lands if you have like a Valakut plan or Soul of Wind Grace is also using the Valakut plan and this one in combination with the Dryad or Prismatic Omen works the same way as Scapeshift does and apart from that I just find it super cool that Wizards is printing a card that is creating le letting you create Right hours. It's a very fun card. Yeah. I think multiplayer players will be very happy about this. Maybe maybe having some crazy interactions with layers that uh, will make uh, judges want to uh, <laughs> True. Uh, quit their job. True. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Uh, maybe, maybe this can also be used in Titania, maybe. 
Not sure. Yeah, probably, yeah probably. It probably can. We will. We will see. I think it will. It will definitely not be played in Gidrock as Gidrock follows a different game plan. Yeah. But what I also find interesting is maybe we get to a point at which you even play it in a deck, finding it with Spellseeker, since it's CMC two, as as a winning line for infinite mana in combination with some other stuff. Yeah. Let's see. Maybe, maybe if we have the <laughs> may, may, if we have the appropriate command zone, because True. right right now there's nothing in my mind with which I would say we can give it a go. In that direction. Cast this with uh, lightning priest, and you can make infinite mana. Kind of, not really. Uh, you can, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, if you if you're fire. at a point at which you make infinite dried hours, you can. There's no point in making infinite mana, but. I don't know. I mean, they they've they've printed a cool version or a cool copy of Concordant Crossroads recently, so maybe that's that's the way to go here. Isn't there an uh, an equipment that that's you tap the creature and deal damage or something like that? Really? But it maybe. it also has to grant haste, right? Well, with lightning greaves. Okay. But then yeah. the equipment falls off, right? Uh, right. Off? You you cannot e equip. Uh, magic, is, magic is so boring. Magic is so boring. <laughs> yeah, okay. 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 Uh, let's see. Let's um, stop theory crafting. And and wish you uh, a good evening, good morning, whenever you're listening to this. Since we already arrived at the end, a quick one, but still, as I said, we wanted to talk about a few cards. And hopefully you can manage to include some of these into your piles, whatever you're... Yeah. Up to for, for your for your Christmas events or whatever. Yeah, anything. Next. I mean, there is amongst the the twelve cards we've talked about. I think there is not a single one that would be included in Grist or Rafine, the most currently most popular decks. Uh, maybe some of them, but uh, I doubt it. Later, on, later on arms can maybe be played in Rafine. Uh, yeah, true, true. And I think Legions to Ashes is too clunky. Yeah. And then if we if we talk about Gris, there is the the insect, the artifact insect, which we haven't talked about yet, or now, but yeah, so far so good. Okay, if there isn't okay. anything you would like to add, uh, nothing from my side. Then I would say thanks for listening, tuning in, and enjoy your time. Have a good one. See you next time. Bye bye.